Jeremy, welcome to another FiTech Tech Tuesday. Today we're going to go over the install checklist on this beautiful 63 Corvette with the 30003 fuel injection system. Alright, so after the install, we got it running. I set the ignition timing. I've adjusted the idle screw for the IIC steps to be below 10. I've got the fuel pressure checked, it's good. Our pressure regulator is already preset out of the factory, so I just have to make sure the fuel filter is not clogged or anything like that. I've got it started, I've got the idle AFR set, I've got the cam select set so that it's not learning very far away. I'm gonna go on the dyno now. It's gonna act just like a road. You can do it with a friend if you have a friend, but uh, I don't have friends, so I'm gonna do it on the dyno by myself. So first I'm gonna roll it up to speed and I'm gonna check the fuel trim and fuel learn. If there are ranges that are learning a lot or if the trim's way off, I'm gonna to try to hold it there and let the learning finish. As I go through the gears, I'm looking for points where the fuel trim is adding a lot or taking out a lot of fuel. It may try to hold it there for a little bit to make sure the fuel learn can take over from the fuel trim and make everything good to go. During deceleration, the air-fuel ratio can go to 20.6 to 1. That means the fuel has been turned off and it's just pumping air through the engine. This is normal with fuel cutoff enabled. When I do a light cruise, I like to set the target air-fuel ratios from the high 13s to the high 14s, depending on how smooth the engine runs with those air fuel ratios. But at full throttle, I set the target air fuel ratios to about 12 and a half to one for maximum power and safe operation. And when I hit the throttle pedal really hard, I don't want to see it go lean and I don't want to see it go super rich, but a little bit rich is okay. As a reminder, rich is numbers that are lower, lean is numbers that are higher. When I'm on the dyno, I like to data log everything in case I need to go back and look at anything that happens. It's easy, just push the OK button and data logging will start. Here I noticed it went a little bit lean after exiting the desal fuel cutoff, so in the fuel cut control I'm going to change the DFCO return fuel up a little bit. I also might reduce that map value just so it comes in a little sooner. And I'm going to change the enable temp. I'm going to set it to 124. That way it doesn't cut off until the engine is warmed up a little bit. When I turn the engine off, it takes a few seconds for everything to go off in the handheld. But that means everything is finally saved permanently. One thing I always check on new installs is to make sure the key wire is in the right spot. An easy way to do this is to check the RPM during cranking. It should show RPMs when I crank. One trick I use to calibrate hot starts is to rev it up a little bit and then key off. That will dry out the intake manifold and then I can check to see if it's getting enough fuel during a restart to make sure it's correctly calibrated. You can see it's a little bit slower starting when the manifold is dry compared to wet. As long as both wet and dry manifolds start reasonably when the engine's hot, you can assume the cranking fuel is correct for that temperature. For accelerator pump settings, a lot of the times I'll quick check in park or neutral and see if I can take a pretty hard stab without any lean backfires or just going lean in general. It's doing pretty good, but that's because I've already adjusted it. It's doing pretty good when I hit the throttle. That's really snappy. When I lift the throttle, it may go a little bit rich, but if it goes too rich, you can actually adjust the setting we call tip out. It's in the accelerator pump settings in the pro tuning. Tip out will actually reduce the fuel injection when I'm lifting the throttle. The fuel injection reduction during tip out is to compensate for the wall wetness of the fuel getting sucked off the intake manifold walls. It has a nice smooth transition when I lift the throttle, so I know it's good. After checking the fuel trim and learns, checking the fuel pressure, 
and adjusting the accelerator pumps, I think I'm ready to do some power pulls to see how much power this thing can make. I've already got pre-programmed safe air fuel ratios, so I'm just gonna set up the power pull on the dyno, make a few pulls, and show you the results. All right, so I've done the dyno pull while recording the log file with my handheld. Now I'm gonna look at it on my laptop. So I'm gonna connect it with the USB cable and go down on the main menu to the handheld software mode selection. In there, I'm gonna select open USB mass storage. And now the handheld will act like a flash drive. So on my laptop, I open the Windows Explorer, I go down to the USB D drive, I open the 30003 folder, open the log file folder, and open the dashboard folder. Inside there is a dashboard1.csv file. That happens to be the newest log file for this car. I can open it in Excel, or I can open it in our laptop software. Now that we've done some tuning, I want to make a backup of this so that I can go back to it if I want to. Select Read Cal from ECU. That way, if I want to go back to this, I can go back to it pretty easily. And the main thing that I'm looking for on this log file during a dyno pull is that the AFR stayed close to the target, the trim didn't have to go far, the AFR learn didn't have to go far, made sure I had full throttle, and everything looks good on this pull, so I'm gonna call it good. All right, well that went pretty smoothly, so I've tuned it up, I've checked the timing, checked, made sure the fuel pressure was good, set the idle adjustments, I rolled it on the dyno, made some fuel adjustments for accelerator pump, uh, did the cranking fuel a little bit for hot engine, and some after start. It's running really good. It made 310 horsepower to the tires. So thanks for tuning in for Five Tech Tech Tuesday. Tune in every week, put your comments down below, and if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. Put your questions down below or contact us on any of our social media platforms.